Metamorphic is uh, this experience that was initially premiered as a social experience between two people um, that was based off of the artwork of Wesley Allsbrook. Um, and she is this incredible um, illustrator, painter, drawer who um, can create these amazing worlds in 3D. And we really tried to uh, put something together where it felt like you embodied her characters and then uh, through interaction in a shared virtual space we're able to body swap. Um, I'll sort of try to break down what that means but I'm going to show a, uh, a, um, a trailer first that also includes the excellent music of uh, Tim Fain. Essentially, what we were doing was taking these quill assets uh, done by Wesley into uh, Unity and then created a back end system where we could dynamically sort of draw them on and off. Um, uh, Ellie Zinaniri made a complete system um, where essentially we could uh, control how these um, environments um, would sort of come in around you uh, dynamically. Um, and uh, this was super important in terms of how uh, we introduced uh, the participants to sort of the environment and also that it was like dynamic and malleable. Um, but also, um, uh, as you'll sort of see in a second, it really also had to, uh, was used to play with um, people's sense of embodiment. Um, so not only were you moving around this world where interactivity could potentially uh, uh, draw or undraw certain environmental elements. Um, it was also uh, could change how your own appearance uh, looked. So we dynamically rigged quill assets up uh, through Houdini um, and then based on your interaction with the environment or other characters or people, uh, you would actually take on their aesthetic appearance, essentially having this ability to body swap um, as you move through an experience. So this is actually in headset, and at the beginning of the experience, we open it up by sort of introducing yourself to your new body, and this is like a, in a fully tracked environment. Um, and so you're uh, slowly watching your new uh, your new sort of avatar be drawn onto you uh, dynamically. Um, this is some footage from our Sundance installation where you can also see that we initially split the character, or not the character, split the participants in half. Um, and you sort of first introduce them to their new form. Um, and then after that, you started introducing environmental elements uh, that if you interacted with, would uh, take on new appearances and sort of switch between uh, the different worlds. And then at that point, we would draw the curtain and, um, 
they would potentially then realize that they were in the same virtual space together. And this was always like a first really amazing moment when they realized that the physical boundary was gone and that they could interact with each other in the virtual space um, and was sort of like the first eye opener and usually got these really uh, amazing sort of uh, reactions. Um, the second major element and what I want to talk about more is that we'd have these um, sort of, we called them fakers, but they were uh, digital avatars coming into the space that would sort of react to you and um, also try to like approach and interact with you. Um, and uh, eventually there was even like a third surprise element. We'd send in a third person in the mocap uh, uh, suit as well. And then all of a sudden there would be like a third physical person in the space. And we're sort of essentially trying to play with what you feel is like, uh, you know, real or virtual, what's in your physical space, what's not. And then there's a very sort of dramatic visual ending where the world um, eventually uh, undraws itself. Um, but one of the, even though we had a ton of great reactions from the experience at Sundance, um, and this is obviously something you have to pivot to in this new world where we can't do installations like this, but we are trying to think about what it means to engage people in, in virtual spaces and especially about consent and how to empower people who potentially don't know how they're going to uh, uh, encounter people um, in, uh, in a virtual space. And this is also especially important for sort of our um, digital characters, our fakers. Uh, and this is sort of going back to them. Um, and you know, how we are trying to discover some ways of potentially having some machine learning algorithms or some understanding of intent of whether or not somebody wants to engage uh, with these, uh, with these uh, sort of digital characters or not. And it's a major concern right now is sometimes people don't want to interact with these people and how can we understand that dynamically within the experience itself. Um, and it's still one of the hardest things to take into consideration is how somebody is reacting to the experience um, uh, and, uh, and, you know, being able to um, understand to sort of take care so that we're not hurting anybody and also that people have sort of full consent in terms of how they're interacting uh, both with real and digital characters. Um, and in that sense, you know, we're trying to think about how we can gather data sets or look at what are physical poses or reactions um, that can be dynamically understood and in some ways try to control digital characters so that they react better um, to, uh, to the participants. And I think this is something that's super important, not just for a singular art piece like this, but you know, in larger virtual shared social settings that um, include uh, digital avatars and actors. Um, and um, this is an experience we're now uh, turning into a single player experience and we're trying to figure out some ways to also uh, create it so it can be networked online. Um, but we've obviously had to pivot how we're thinking about this because in January, like, oh, we're gonna try to take it and do installations all over the world with it. And um, a lot of cultural institutions uh, obviously are, are not uh, going for that right now. 